with your face. Y'all see these stars I'm seeing? Gosh, they're pretty. Like shimmers in the sea. We are obviously the victims of a tasteless joke being perpetuated. Uh, perpetrated? I mean, we're being made fools of, aren't we? When I get out of here, I'm going to show that hermit what you get for messing with me. Maximilian, always ready to give up, to lash out, always searching for answers, but always in the wrong place, never looking inside himself. I hope you'll pardon my interruption, but I think it's because he's unhappy. And platitudes from a figment, figment of my imagination, no less. Who said I wasn't a figment of your mind? But you know the truth. You don't need someone else to tell you. You've always known it. Everyone knows it. They just won't see it. We're overwhelmed with stories from our earliest days. The stories others tell us, and the stories we tell ourselves. These stories are how we try to make sense of our lives, but they are not real, are they? They're just stories. You need to drop your story and see the truth. Stories are real. If they mean something, if they inspire you to kindness or, or action, but maybe Max's story about himself is all wrong, and that's why he's so unhappy. Me to give up my my discipline, my control. I, oh, but I can't. I can't. I, without order, there is chaos. You need to love the chaos, Maximilian. Let it envelop you, take you where it will. Besides, you really have no choice anyway. No, that's not true. The basis of everything is order, not chaos. It's true, I know it is. So did you. Why are you denying it? Before you died, the plan made you happy. No, it didn't. I made myself happy. There's nothing holding you back but you. If you can't understand that, you will never understand anything. Goodbye, Maximilian. This whole thing, it's... it's... Farce, right? You couldn't be more right. Hello, Max. What? Who? Why do you look like me? Are you me? Not really. I'm who you think you are. I am disciplined, controlled. I have no doubts, and I don't exist. Yet you have judged yourself against me your whole life. Why? Why do you berate yourself for not being me? I don't feel right about this anymore. I, I need to get out of here. You asked for this. Why are you fighting it? The same reason you always do. Fear of the unknown. Not having control. Is this the answer? Because it sure sounded like an answer. That I don't understand. Who are you again? And why do you look like me? You think he's alright? Should we help him? 
He's not looking for the truth. He's looking for a new way to organize reality in his head. A new story of the happy you. The contented you. Me. That's not... Uh, it can't be right. I, I've only been searching for the answer to the equation. Because it will set us free. Won't it? How? By removing the need to make any decision. To have your life completely controlled. The illusion of certainty. Your obsession allowed you to avoid the real question. Who are you? I'm Max. Me. I'm real. You can't convince me otherwise. Please don't convince me I'm not. It's okay, Mr. Vicker. We're here watching over you. You just ride this out, right? The concept of Max is what's not real. By the architect. Architect? How could I have believed in an architect? That's ridiculous. I must be losing my mind completely. What you're saying almost makes sense. We exist inside our thoughts, thinking we're in control. That's it, isn't it? We have no control over anything. It's all lies. How could I not have seen this? But how do we escape our... ourselves? I see you're back with us. Feared we lost you there. Never seen anyone pass out yet stay upright before. I woke up. The illusions I built for myself just fell away. I'm no longer interpreting, I'm experiencing. Everything is perfect. In a way, perhaps it's more accurate to say I was asking the wrong questions. I understand so much more now. I see it all. All there is to be experienced, to be lived. Of course there is pain and loss, but the suffering is caused by trying to control reality. Clinging to the way you want things to be, not enjoying the way they are. I am content. I have finally found what I was looking for, even though I was looking for the wrong thing. So... Not so much found as finally listened. Yes, it is quite the convoluted maze we build for ourselves. How right you are. Words are overrated. Captain, Felix and the Vicar are arguing again.
You ain't making a lick of sense, Max. Of course I got a self. I'm me, Felix Millstone. No. That is just a story you've been building for yourself from a very young age. There. See? You just said yourself. Your. Self. Guess I got a self after all. Checkmate, preacher. Semantics and nothing more. The construction of our language assumes the existence of a self. Whoa, 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 whoa. slow down. What's this about construction work? Our language has all manner of paradoxes contained within it. Tell me, what happens to your lap when you stand up? What are you talking about? Max, you've been acting real funny ever since you and that hermit sniffed all them drugs. Maybe you ought to ask Ellie to take a look at your head. Good to see you, Bob. The Groundbreaker has approved our request for docking, Captain. You're free to disembark. Hey, Captain. I was thinking about what you said before, after we went to the Lost Hope on the Groundbreaker. I reckon you're right. I think I'm ready to stop fretting and fussing and, and ask June Lei to go steady straight out. And I'm thinking of doing it here, on the ship. I was kind of hoping you'd offer. The thing is, I can't ask her over like, like this. I mean, look at me. I'm all covered in engine grease and I ain't showered in nigh on a week. I smell like sweat most days and, well, don't look too close at my fingernails. I was thinking, hoping, we could stop by Groundbreaker for gas supplies. I mean, only if you're not busy. Or when you're heading through Groundbreaker for something else. Anyhow, next time we dock in Groundbreaker, let me know. It's almost time for today's episode of The Chairman's Children. Care to listen with me? I think I got just the thing, my dear. High-grade shampoo and conditioner, scrubby brush, a nice lotion, that sort of thing. I still got them, too. What's the scrubby brush for? Cleaning around your nails, sweetheart. Gets the engine grease out. Makes your hands soft. Most folk don't got the time. Or bathtubs for such. Me included. I'll let you have one on clearance. Oh, gosh. We never talked about what kind of smells she likes. It comes down to what sort of intent you got. If I was looking to do a spy job over in engineering, I'd be safe with refurbished ship. Now, if I was a young thing trying to come on all precious-like, I'd probably go with Rosish. But if I was doing it for my own self, I'd pick mock apples and synthamin. I guess you could eeny-miny-mo it. 
Take your time, dear. Uh, Captain? I'll just wrap that up for you, since it's for a special occasion. I'll pay for that, ma'am. Thanks for being so helpful. You're welcome, dear. I've got a lovely little throat. Groundbreaker's safe from melting to bits now. Oh, thanks, Captain. In her messages, June Lay said her mama used to make this dish for Monarch. Dustback casserole. And then for dessert, there's a thing called, uh, sweetheart cake. Now, there's gotta be some place in Stellar Bay that can bake a casserole. And I heard tell there's a Rizzo's town near there called Cascadia, what specializes in sweets. Thanks, Captain. Uh, hello. Uh, June Lei called up from engineering. Now, is there something I can help you with? Take care. Were I a gambling woman, I'd wager you're responsible for my mechanical safe return. I can't thank you enough. Some crew members are causing a disturbance on the ship. You're adjusting before you pull. You're anticipating it. You... Of course I'm anticipating it. What if I shoot a friend on accident? That's on account of your stance. You want to lean into it. Embrace it. Work with it. You're in control here, Parvati, not the gun. Don't let a hunk of metal jerk you around. You've been around powerful machinery all your life, and you're always in control, right? I guess that's kind of like when the filler's shooting 600 cans of near-molten sal tuna down the conveyor while I'm trying to tune a belt. Here, stand like me. Just so. Hip square. Lean forward a little. It's just equipment, and you're just an engineer using it. Ah! Okay. We'll try again later. You'll get it. I promise. <laughs> We have successfully arrived at Phineas's orbital lab, Captain, and we are still in one piece. Shall I congrat congratulate my
<clears throat> Hello? Can you hear Hear me? Does this work? Oh, damn it, blast, that's loud. I'm just securing my ongoing experiments. And securing myself. Mind the mess. Uh, I haven't had a visitor since, uh, in fact, I've never had a visitor. Driving you from hibernation was my greatest accomplishment. Your odds of survival were a mere 28%. Oh, thank the law. Your skin hasn't spontaneously changed color. Potential side effect of the revival process. Very rare, but uh, you never know. Right. Welcome to my little uh, habitation, such as it is. Uh, so, welcome. May Not at all, my intrepid accomplice. I should thank you for tolerating my somewhat brusque manner. I only regret that I couldn't save more of your fellow settlers, what with being hunted by the board and emptying my supply of necessary chemicals. Oh, what? Oh, it's not you. I uh, do experiments in that room. Some of them get quite scientific. The unexpected is to be treasured, but uh, from a safe distance. Regardless, it's quite comfortable in here, you know. Absolutely. No, and I've been trying very hard to avoid making eye contact. Nice to meet you, Dr. Wells. I'm Parvati Holcomb. Wait, not another word. I don't want to know your name. I don't want to know who you are. Let's just enjoy our plausible deniability while it lasts, shall we? Why don't you just invite the entire colony to my secret, carefully concealed laboratory? It isn't as if I wanted privacy. Oh, fine. As long as you're... 
vouching for their character, and they aren't touching things. For what it's worth, I am pleased that you found a crew such as they are. You're a talented scientist, after all. Our kind has always been incredibly popular. Yes, indeed. Well done. Also, you still haven't spontaneously liquefied, which pleases me immensely. Progress. What's on your mind? Some crew members are causing a disturbance on the ship. You're adjusting before you call. You're anticipating. You... We are now in orbit above Stellar Bay, Captain. No blockade is a match for my piloting skills. Hey! Don't think I've seen you around. That means you must be new to Stellar Bay. Well, spit and sulfur. Mr. Sanjar keeps me posted at this landing pad, so I don't hardly know anything about what goes on in town. So go tell Mr. Sanjar to kick rocks. Life's too short for landing pad duty. But I like this job. It's the best way to see who's coming and going from Stellar Bay. Which means I get to do my favorite part. Okay. On behalf of Monarch Stellar Industries, welcome to Stellar Bay, home of the freshest sal tuna in Halcyon. Please state your name for the records. Swell. There's one for the logs. I'm even going to give you your own entry code. I'm not supposed to do that. It's against procedure, but Mr. Sanjar isn't so strict about the rules here. Besides, I got a lot of empty entries to fill. Oh, that'll just make Mr. Sanjar's day if you tell him. But that's all outside our walls. Mostly. Did he just say Raptodons and cannibals? I can't wait! Oh, sure. Anyway, Mr. Sanjar's got lots to say on that subject. We don't get ship traffic in town. Only off-worlders who do make it out here are sublight. They got a base in Fallbrook. And thank the stars for them, or we would have run out of Rizzo's Purple Berry Crunch years ago. Mr. Sandra, I'll be mighty pleased to meet you. Oh, and if you're headed that way, maybe you could do me a favor? 
I got this Rizzo's Rangers Tosswell poster coming in on the next sublight shipment. Only I haven't heard anything in a while. You think you could check with Celia to see if it's come in? Thanks a bunch. What was your family like, Felix? Did you ever know him? I never knew him. I was a stowaway. That's what they call orphans who grow up in the back bays. Oh, gosh. I'm sorry. That must have been lonesome. Come on, Parvati. Who are you talking to? Imagine me pining after my family. Yeah, I suppose that was a touch lonesome. But hey, look at me now. I made it. I got a ship and everything. You're back! No! That can't be true! Not my little boy! Wait, are you sure it wasn't someone else? That's Tucker's ring. His daddy gave it to him and he never took it off since! How did you... No! No, it can't be! He's not dead! Not my child! Not my sweet Tucker! I... Take the money! Greetings. What can I... You know, sending you is the first bright idea I've seen from that man, because I told him to stop bothering me about it a week ago. I still don't know anything about it, but if you want to help him, Velma's the one to ask. But I'll warn you, Grim wore her patience thin a long time ago. Or is he not paying you on account of how he tried to fix the thing his own self and busted it even worse? and then said you wasn't fixing it fast enough, so he's docking your wages again? Not that I got any prior experience with such. Not at all. Mr. Nandi treats us all right and pays us well. I just spent most of my paycheck on Raptid on acid. Laws, no. Sometimes it's canid teeth or mantis warm wings, whatever Sebastian has in stock, really. So I can talk to him, of course. He doesn't get going about much else. I reckon she's got a little bit of a squish on this fella. He's sort of the strong, silent type. Unfortunately, my apartment's kind of filling up with his stuff. I couldn't. What if he says no? Hey, maybe you could ask him for me. I oh. Mr. Nandi's doing that thing where he breathes through his nose real slowly. I'd better get back to work. He doesn't talk much, but he's got this quiet intensity, you know? Like, plus, he's got great legs. It's hard to find a man who doesn't skimp on lower body exercises. Sorry, sometimes I get carried away. You should know, you're getting excellent reviews from across the company. What can I do for you? I see. And was his delivery of the MSI authorized greeting up to snuff? Well, that's excellent. What else can I do for you? Did you know Junlei? Miss Tennyson? Nah, she never looked my way. I knew of her, though. Who didn't? She was just about the busiest woman on the Groundbreaker. What did folks say about her then? Tough. Competent. Had a glare that'd stop you dead in your tracks. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, by the stars, my poor heart. Most people don't. We're used to folks swooning at our feet. You don't gotta be embarrassed. A healthy survival reflex is nothing to be embarrassed about. Besides, this place is enough to try anyone's nerves. Where should I begin? 
with the oversized mantisaurs, or perhaps the rap spewing acid at our walls. The board was right. This place isn't fit for human habitation, and I was a fool for staying. That was a real popular meal 10, 20 years back. These days, everybody's had a belly full of salt tuna. I can whip one up for you, but it'll cost. Oh, yikes. I can't cover this much, Captain. What? No, Captain, I, I... You're right, boss. I think this guy's trying to fleece us. Both of you, stop it. It's all right, miss. I'm a coward at heart. Made that clear from the outset. Look, Captain, this is the best I can do without putting myself out of business. I'm mighty glad you reckon so. There we are. Now, if you don't mind, I really need to take a leak. My belly's gurgling just to smell it, Mr. Raymond. Thank you so much. A pleasure to help such a charming young lady. You're a gentle soul, miss. Be careful with this one, all right? He's kind of a brute. Oh, gosh. My tom's rumbling just... I hope this fancy so... I hear those rich people in Byzantium pay a handsome bit for rap money. I'd give you a friendlier welcome, but I'm up to my elbows and salt tuna guts. Gosh, this old girl's in a rough way. Hey, you want to try running a cannery with obsolete machinery? You be my guest. Um, sorry ma'am, I wasn't trying to be rude, it's just... Your flanging apparatus isn't making a strong flange, so your sealer isn't sealing right, and... Oh. I see what you're saying. Huh. I'll have to try that. Anyway, what do you folks need? That he's got his load on and I'm stuck covering his shift? That's... Wow. I sure feel like an ass now. Yeah, I wouldn't wish that on Catherine herself. Still, it's good to know what happened to him. Something else on your mind? This again? I swear, this is the last time I contract for any special requests. You can tell Grimm his poster came in. You can also tell him I got a better offer for it. So now it's going to Nell. That about cover it? It's staying locked up in my office until Nell shows with her money. She runs the bedding parlor across the way. She asked me about the poster once. Just once. Made a real generous offer, too. Damn right it is. Sure can. Fair enough. Take the poster, then. Stealing's such a nasty word. Let's call it skimming. And yeah, let's just say I've noticed the sterobiotics we use for the fish would get used a little faster on Braxton shifts. We're not like those corporate towns where you get fined for sleeping on the wrong side of the bed. Besides, the Spacer's Choice stuff we use is cheap enough. And Braxton knows how to get the salt tuna, fat and mostly tumor free. Or new, I guess. Have you had time to check on that poster yet? 
Would you look at that? I can't thank you enough. And you know what? Take my old toss ball blocker too. Must be MSI's work. They got a knack for burning bridges. Well now, here I thought those mantasaurs had peacefully exited the premises. But you're a simpler explanation. Thanks for the assistance. Name's Weston. Every once in a while I set up shop along these here roads. Care to purchase a thing or two? survived. <laughs> That's what fixers call deductive reasoning. <laughs> 